Welcome to the eBusiness Boss channel. Now, if you haven't been here before, hello, my name is Nick. If you have and you're a subscriber here, welcome back. Now, today I'm going to show you guys something pretty cool. I'm going to show you how to create a Shopify store for your t-shirt business. I'm also going to go and show you how you can drive traffic to that store and a load of useful tips and tricks that I think you could implement and start making money today to be honest. I really hope you find this video useful. If you are new here, consider subscribing to the channel. Turn on the notifications bell and that way you'll be the first to know about useful videos just like this. And we are committed to dropping useful videos like this every single week. Now, let's get into the video. I'm going to keep this snappy for you guys so it's as useful as possible. So before we get started, a checklist. Now, before I tell you and teach you how you can actually build a Shopify store for your t-shirt business, you're going to need the following. So number one, you're going to need a free trial of Shopify. Now, unless you've got Shopify already, in which case you can just use this video uh, and get straight on with it. Now, I will leave a link in the description uh, that will allow you to get a 14-day free trial of Shopify. It will be an affiliate link, so if you do use it, I will make a commission, and it's how we keep this free and useful content coming. You're also going to need some well-researched t-shirt designs. So you don't actually need these designs ready, but you need a good idea uh, of who you want to target, what sort of designs you want to make. To be honest, you don't even need to have got that far. By the end of this video, I think you'll have much more information on how you can actually find a niche worth targeting. So lastly, you're going to need a print-on-demand partner because for this business model, I want to show you how to build a Shopify store, but one that doesn't require you to do any of the heavy lifting. So we'll outsource that uh, by using a drop shipping business model. And it really means you can focus on growing your business and scaling up. So now I found you guys some pretty interesting examples of Shopify t-shirt stores that aren't doing too badly. So the first is a generic store. So they're called t-shirt unicorn. As you can see now on, on screen, to be honest, I'm not really sure what they're going for. Um, it wouldn't be the sort of t-shirt website I'd put myself, um, only because I think it's a little bit random and generic. I'd, I'd want to really understand what their strategy was going to be with driving traffic. So the second store, it's called acid87.co.uk. Now, this is a very niche focused store. So it's been built around people that have an interest in Acid House, the music. So just so you know, I don't really have an interest in that music, but you know, each to their own. Uh, I just thought this is a really useful example to help you guys understand how you should be looking uh, at this business model. So as I said, my advice is always to focus on one particular niche. If you've already got a passion, let's say you're a massive raver, uh, you love going out and raving, well, Acid House might well be something you're into, something you know really well, and that way you'd know what sort of designs people like you might like. So that's really important. If I know a lot of you guys are from the US, let me know. Do they call it Acid House where, where you guys are? Or is it just raving music? Um, you might think, what is Acid House? So this is a UK website, uh, this example. But yeah, um, you guys can use this model wherever you are in the world. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how I would go about driving traffic to the Acid House niche-focused Shopify store that you can see. So guys, how does this work? It's really simple. The main thing is don't overcomplicate this. Keep it simple. So number one, you build your Shopify store. That's easy. I'll show you how to do it. Number two, you need to integrate Shopify with a POD partner. POD stands for print on demand. So we want a company that has printing facilities and distribution facilities to receive our orders based on whatever unique designs we've come up with, they'll make it for us as the order comes in and ship it out to our customers. So that's what we want. And lastly, of course, we're going to need traffic because, well, how else are we going to get sales unless we already have a huge existing brand, uh, which is, is a possibility. So when it comes to building your Shopify store, I have put together a video and literally it's right over my shoulder. I show you exactly how to build a Shopify store in about 10 minutes. It's that easy. So watch this video first but when you finished go back and watch this video it will be worth your time and you'll know exactly how to do it so whatever type of shopify store you're building that tutorial will give you all of the basics you need to know so watch this video first then watch that 
So when it comes to POD partners, who should we consider using? So the the options I've I put out in front of you guys here, these are three of the most popular. So you've got Printful, you've got Printify, and T Launch. So my personal preference out of the three would probably be Printful, but each to their own. Printful and Printify ship to all countries, bar a few exclusions, but they do Europe, the US, um, loads of others. T-Launch, as far as I can see, doesn't have quite the same capability. So if I'm wrong on that, please correct me. But from what I can see, I know they serve the US, Canada, and the UK, uh, but I'm not sure about anywhere, anywhere else. So for this example, I've gone with Printful, but whatever example you use, you can use this methodology. So let's say we've built a Shopify store. Now we want to sync up with our POD partner. So they are dealing with all of our fulfillment. So for this example, like I said, we've chosen to work with Printful. It's going to be really, really easy. Sign up to Printful. Install the Printful app on Shopify. Follow the instructions and connect the two. Now, the article you can see on the screen actually is a really useful step-by-step -step guide to help you connect Shopify to Printful. I'll leave a link to that article in the description below. So that way, yeah, you, you can just work out how to do this really, really quickly. So once you've connected the two, you pick the products you want to drop ship on Printful. So they have loads of options, loads of different products. And yeah, you can use their tools to create designs on, on the you know products that you want to sell. But what I would always recommend doing and what you're probably going to need to do is get some original artwork made. So if we were using the Acid House example, we would find some really cool designs that would resonate with people that were interested in Acid House and we'd upload that artwork to the chosen products we wanted to drop ship. After you've done that, you refresh, and after a little bit of time, these products will appear in your Shopify store. So that, to me, is the easy part. So we're really getting somewhere now. We've got a Shopify store, it's connected to Printful. Now we need to drive traffic. So shortly, I'm gonna show you exactly how I would drive traffic to the Acid House example. Um, but these are some of the most common methods for driving traffic. So. SEO, search engine optimization and content marketing. If you're a blogger, you've got a team of writers, put loads of useful content out there. Uh, if we're using Acid House, the example, write about things that people that are interested in Acid House would want to read. So you can do that. You can use Google AdWords. That's a really easy way to get right in front of people that have an interest in Acid House. Facebook, and that's what I'm gonna show you to do shortly in this video. Instagram, so Instagram story ads are still incredibly underrated in my opinion. YouTube, so with this really, you can of course run YouTube ads, you can of course build your own YouTube channel, but you could also collaborate with a YouTube influencer that already has an audience. You can come up with a deal to say, look, I will give you a link for any t-shirt you sell, I'll give you a commission, and it works both ways. You could build a subreddit, email marketing, or use your existing brand awareness. So if you're watching this, you already have a business that people know, you've got a community of people that like you. You could use this method to start putting out merch and making money from merchandise. Um, because if people know your brand, then likeliness is they'll go to this website and purchase things from you to support your brand and your mission. So driving traffic, let me show you how I would do it. So. The reason it's important to find a niche focus is it's much easier to get in front of people that might be interested in your t-shirts or your merchandise. So for me, Facebook ads are without a doubt the best way to do it. So let me jump into another screen and I'll show you exactly how I would target people with this example of Acid House. Okay, so this is the Acid 87 website that I've spoken about. You can see uh, that they've got some random products here. Another very interesting thing that I will talk to you about shortly is this here. So this is a Facebook pixel helper. So this tells me that Acid87 have installed a Facebook pixel in this website. So as I visited this website, the chances are I will be targeted with a Facebook ad later down the line. Uh, Facebook pixels are very, very important. I'm gonna to talk to you more about that shortly, but let's stay on track. So you can see However, this company is gaining their attention. 
uh, it's working. They've got over 20,000 people that like it. Yeah, now I check here normally to see if they're running any Facebook ads. Page transparency, see more. So this page is not currently running ads. If they were, and if you find an example that is, uh, we can look at their ads and replicate it if we want. We want to sell Acid House t-shirts. First of all, go, and if you haven't got one, create a Facebook ad account. Under this ad account, you'll find a section called Audience Insights. Now, I'm going to show you what I do. So here I've set the location to United Kingdom because that suits this example, but the US is obviously absolutely huge. Far more people in the US are using Facebook, easier to target people. Um, and we're just going to go down to Interests here and type in Acid House. Now, Facebook is going to tell us some really important things. Uh, so according to them, they've got an audience of people between 400 and 450,000 people that have this interest on Facebook. It gives us here useful demographics, tell us, you know, the most common age groups, uh, which ties in with Acid House being, um, you know, something that came through in the 80s, I believe. That was the case. I might be wrong. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. So more importantly, this is going to give us all sorts of information on the type of Facebook ads we should create. So... If we go on to our page likes, we've got here the most liked pages by people that fall into this interest group. So I would use this and create a number, usually per campaign I will create five ad sets. So each ad set will have different targeting. So I will use a combination of these different pages. I will use a combination of different demographics. And I'll try and find the most cost-effective way of getting in front of these people. I want to run an ad to my drive awareness, to my Shopify store from Facebook. And how I'm going to do that is get in front of the right people. So I'll go into my Facebook ads manager now. Uh, I've already prepped a campaign to show you guys exactly how I would go about doing this. So create a campaign. Now, for your objective, I have selected traffic. I would also recommend turning campaign budget optimization on. Make sure that's done. Facebook is getting very, very clever with machine learning, AI, uh, and they will find the right people for your ads if you work with them. So into the actual ads, ad set. Now, what I found in Audience Insights was two pages here that I like the look of. So Happy Mondays and The Warehouse Project. So I want to run an ad to anyone that has those two interests. So all I've done in here, I'll delete that. So happy Mondays. All right, so I've got my ages, people in the UK between 80 and 65. Probably to make this more effective, we would drill down based on this information here. So highest percentage of people. Men is between 25 and 34. So we could change that. I won't, but uh, we could. Happy Mondays. And the other one was the Warehouse Project. There we go. So Facebook's telling me that they have an audience of 740,000 people that you know have these interests. Now, let's just change this to, I think the top end was 34. So I am going to do that. I said I wouldn't, but I'm just going to do it. Okay, so that's a bit more like it, down to 450,000 people. And yeah, that for me would be one ad set. Now, I would go ahead, I would set my daily budget, and for the whole campaign, it's up to you really what you can afford. But say you're going to start with 15, 20 pounds, you would ask Facebook to distribute that 15, 20 pounds across all of your different ad sets. So I would go continue, and that, that would be one ad set done. You have to go through, create your ad, get you know a nice image of the t-shirt, something that really would resonate with people that have this interest. Write out your ad copy. Um, and then once you've done confirm, go back and create another ad set. So for the next ad set, we could use, I don't know, Makina Madness and mm, Creamfields as another ad set. Once you've set this up and you're running your Facebook ad, Facebook sometimes takes around 24 hours to warm up. Only test what you can afford, but over time, you will see if something's working. If something is working and you're making money, you can gradually increase your budget. So I say gradually because if you just suddenly ramp up your budget, Facebook doesn't like it. Um, you get much better results if you slowly increase it. So 
yeah, guys, that is how I would go about getting in front of these people. And yeah, I hope, hopefully you found that useful. Let's jump back into the presentation. I hope you found that useful. That got me quite excited, actually. Thinking, God, maybe I should build an Acid House store. No, I won't, because I don't know anything about Acid House. And got, I've got enough going on. So I want to finish, really, by saying and talking to you guys about the power of the Pixel, the Facebook Pixel. So once you've got a Shopify store, and the example I showed you, Acid87, that is a Shopify store. They have installed a Facebook Pixel. And they've installed a Pixel for a very good reason, because they can retarget anyone that visits it with ads. Facebook Pixels are, are one, easy to install. Number two, they allow you to start to build up your very own customer data. So the only way you can use a Facebook Pixel is if you've got permission from the website owner. So if it's not your website, people aren't going to let you install your Facebook Pixel on their website. Um, why would they? And this is why data is so valuable, guys. So with a Shopify store, you have your own opportunity to install your own Pixel. Over time, the more traffic you drive, the more data that goes through your Facebook Pixel, the more Facebook have to go on. So the more traffic you've got, the more sophisticated and advanced your digital assets can become. So Facebook Pixel is the best way to retarget people. If ever you've been on a website and then you go on Facebook and you get hit with a ad, that's why uh, they've had a Facebook Pixel. The other thing you can do is anyone that's coming through and your Facebook Pixel is tracking, they can send that information to a custom audience on Facebook. So that audience that you've then got can then be turned into a lookalike audience. So you can say to Facebook, look, find me more people that look and talk and walk and have all the similar interests to these people. And that is a hugely powerful way to find and build your business uh, on Shopify and beyond. So yeah, very important. Now, that's it for today. Um, I hope you found this useful. If you're struggling, leave a comment below and I will see if I can help you out. Yeah, let me know if you find this sort of content useful. We're trying to put out more useful content for you guys. So your feedback is muchly appreciated. Um, Shopify is a great way to diversify and using some of the tools and tips and tricks I've talked about, I think you can really go quite far. So if you've enjoyed the video, remember to like, remember to subscribe. And if you haven't already, why haven't you subscribed? And turn on the notifications bell. That way you'll be the first to know about useful videos just like this. Guys, thanks for stopping by. There'll be more useful content coming from us very soon. Cheers. Yeah.